Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 132. This episode is with my new friend Adam Itagoyan, who is an actor, a singer, a dancer, a golden retriever owner, and just a great dude. It was so fun to talk to him. Uh, you probably know him best from the Disney Channel show Shake It Up, or maybe The Last Ship, or maybe The Fosters, or maybe the new show Away on Netflix. He's done a ton of stuff. And he's just great. He was such a cool dude. It was so great getting to know him. Uh, We actually talked about him being from Miami and what it was like moving from Miami to California to pursue his dream in acting, what it was like to audition for Wizards of Waverly Place, which was his first uh, TV gig. We talk about dabbling in music. He actually got to uh, make his own music video. Fascinating process. It was really, really cool to talk about what went into it and like deciding on the idea and then working with the director to make it happen really really cool and then we talked about working on two broke girls working on a ton of stuff he's worked on some pretty amazing things um and then we talk about all the things that he's learned in the 12 years that he's been in the business he's just such a fun hang and you're gonna love him so uh let's just get right into it without further ado please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 132 with adam itagoyan theme song time Just ate some breakfast, uh, now I'm, you know, out in the backyard. There you go, there you go, not a bad way to start. How's the, <laughs> how's the air where you at? You doing okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in Vegas right now, so. Oh, perfect. The, <laughs> the air quality, yeah, the air quality is, is totally fine over here, thankfully. Vegas? I've never been to Vegas, what's it like? It's a good time. Um, yeah, it's fun, it's funny because I have, I have family here, so I've always seen, um, the more uh, residential side of it um oh, as well wow. you know I, i've also seen you know, like the vegas side and, and all that stuff in the strip and all that but uh but yeah it's funny seeing kind of like the dichotomy <laughs> sure i bet i bet that is that is funny to think about yeah there are the people that live in vegas don't live on the strip it's like there's this other side of it yeah that makes sense too because also like i know you're from miami and i'm i'm actually yeah. in naples so I'm right across oh, okay. from you. And uh, it's interesting. When you think of Miami, you think of like downtown skyscrapers, Miami. But so much of it on the outskirts is just homes. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Great. You know, every place is like that. So, you know, you have New York. Uh, you know, people think, uh, people think, you know, Manhattan and all that stuff. And then, you know, you have all the other boroughs. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Have you been to New York yet? Yes, I have. I've been a couple times. Um, nice. Yeah, it's, it's it's always been for quick trips, but I gotta go back and actually like, you know, do a proper you know, whole like week long New York trip. There you go. There you go. I I I was there for a weekend once, and I could not get the hang of the uh, the subway system. I was like, I just <laughs> don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, it takes a pick up. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 So, no, you're from Miami, and then I know you went to California to study acting and stuff like that. But I'm wondering, in Miami, because there's a pretty big film presence in Miami. Well, less so now, but when did when did uh, the acting bug kind of hit for you? Was it something you were always around, and, like, how did that, how did that happen? Yeah, no, so, I don't know. I mean, like, for me... I don't really have family members that are actors or, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty much the only one. And it was something that I kind of discovered uh, when I was fairly young, I was eight years old, uh, when I kind of decided I wanted to be an actor. Um, And for me, it was just, you know, I would, I was, I was so obsessed with, you know, watching movies and, and stuff with my dad. And, uh, and I just kind of like love the art of storytelling, the art of filmmaking. And then when I, um, when I was, you know, that young, I was watching Disney Channel a lot, and and that was something that for me was 
you know, super accessible and it made it kind of, you know, attainable. And that's, I think, really what sort of made it, made me kind of come to that conclusion and say, oh, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is, you know, what I want to, what I want to be and all that stuff. And then, um, and yeah, and then I, I did join an acting class out in downtown Miami. Um, nice. For, I, want to say, I want to say like, I don't know, maybe half a year, six months to a year. Sure. Um, which then ended up, you know, taking us to LA and, and then now, you know, I've been there, um, 12 years. Nice. Was it different than you expected it? LA. Yeah, when you first moved there, because it's it's very different I mean, from Miami. Yeah, I was I was super. Yeah, I was super young. I, I so I, I I'm not. I didn't really know what to expect. To be completely honest, I was 11 years old when I moved out there, so sure. it wasn't like I had all these years of uh, anticipation of going to LA or anything like that. Right. But I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into, um, and it, it was a, a bit of a, a culture shock for me. Um, they, cause like you said, Miami and, and California are, are very different, uh, very different beasts, um, Miami and LA. So, uh, but you know, I, I got accustomed to it and, and, uh, and yeah, and you know, I, I love it out there now. Right on, right on. I bet it helped as well, like being young because you don't have, like you said, you don't have the expectations and you, I feel like kids are more like malleable. You know what I mean? You're like, you just kind of take it as it comes cause you don't put too much thought into yeah. it. Yeah. You know, for sure. I mean, I, for me, it was I was uh, I was mostly there just because of, you know, the acting and all that. I wasn't, uh, you know, like growing up there. Right. I wasn't really a fan right. of L.A. and all that stuff. Fair. I just uh, mostly because mostly because I, of my family, you know, my family being all the way back uh, in Miami. You know, of course, I had my, my parents and my little brother, but. Sure. Um, you know, most everybody else, like my grandparents, who I'm really close to, and um, and yeah, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, they're all back in Miami. So that that was the hardest part for me. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. your first gig was on Wizards of Waverly Place. Uh, yeah, really, my first like guest star, yeah, was was Wizards of Waverly Place. Yeah, not bad, not yeah. bad, Adam. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, especially like. You know, starting out for me, it was like, you know, like I said, that was something that kind of I aspired to be was Disney Channel and, and all that. So my first job being with the Waverly Place kind of, um, I don't know, it just it, it made it that much more exciting and, and, you know, kind of like pushed me to go further because, you know, I kind of had reached uh, a mini a mini version of my goal so far. Right. You could have been like, all right, I did it. Let's go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I, for me, it's always been like, you know, I've, I've kind of, I've always had goals and I've always set goals for myself. And, and uh, when I reach them, you know, I never, um, you know, I never say, okay, that's it. You know, I always reach them knowing that once I get there, I'm going to, you know, use that and, and, you know, push to be greater and, and push to be, uh, to, you know, bigger goals and uh, things like that. Yeah, it's all like steps along the way. That makes yeah, sense, for sure. to, oh. especially to see how far you've come in. So, I mean, in a relatively short amount of time, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's. it's I mean, I'm, like I said, I've been out in LA for for twelve years now, so it's you know, it's definitely been a journey. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's working so far. You know, keep it up. Yeah, so far. <laughs> I, but I'm wondering, so I don't know if you remember, but what is the audition like? Do they tell you you're ahead in a backpack at the beginning, or do you find that out on set? Uh, no, that I, I, I knew from, well, I knew I was coming out of a backpack. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't sure <laughs> how. Um, I, I wasn't sure how they were going to pull it off. But, uh, you know, that I figured that out on set. And that was, you know, kind of hilarious. They just really cut the bottom backpack open and I. I tossed it on like a T-shirt. There you um, go. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was you know kind of one way to do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like it was it was so much fun. Like just those auditions are are, are always a good time. Um, you know, they give you the they give you you know your audition size and kind of like just have fun with what they give you. 
And, uh, and it's, it's always tricky because like, especially with things like that, where you're coming out of like a backpack, sometimes they make you do just like these crazy things in an audition room that just like clearly wouldn't translate unless you were on a set <laughs> and like had, had a whole department helping you out. But, uh, but they make you figure it out nonetheless. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're in a backpack. Go. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm doing this. Here we go. It's all about commitment at that point. 100%. 100%. He's got to go for it. And, I mean, hey, you did a good enough job to where they brought you on Shake It Up. Yeah. And, yeah, whoo, that dude, that's a, that's, a, that's a long job. You did, like, 75 episodes as a kid. That's yeah, a lot of work. Was, <laughs> it, it was, especially, yeah, we, we did season one, and that was, I think, 21 episodes. And then we did season two, and that was uh, that ended up being like I think twenty eight, twenty nine. It was a lot of episodes. It took us yeah. almost a year to do yeah. season two. Uh, I want to say I, I want to say almost thirty episodes, but but I could be wrong. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was it was a lot of work, but it was honestly so much fun. I, you know, I, I was at that point. You know, that was my goal. You know, to be on a a series regular on a Disney Channel show, and um, and that's kind of like that was always what I wanted, yeah. and you know to to be working there every day, and, um, you know for me it was a blast. Like I was honestly, I was honestly more hurt when I wasn't working. Like if there was an episode I wasn't in, or you know, <laughs> where you just had a hiatus week, you know, I, you, most people would want to just be home and chill and and you know hang out with friends. I just kind of wanted to stay working. I bet, I bet. And is that did when you audition for something like that? Because it's such a physical show. Did you have to like at the front be like, all right, we need you to be able to sing, we need you to be able to dance. We know you can act out of a backpack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, well, they they had asked me um, in the audition if I if I dance, and uh, and I. By the way, I'm so sorry if you hear my dog oh, barking. No worries, in that's in production value. She, yeah, she is. Uh, <laughs> annoying with the fetch but <laughs> she what, kind, won't stop. what kind of dog is it um, she's a golden retriever oh beautiful yeah so yeah she's retrieving yeah. all day <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway back back to the point um yeah in the audition they asked me if i if i had danced i had said yes um they i mean i i never ended up having to to dance but like twice on the show mm-hmm. um just because you know, I don't, they didn't want everybody dancing because then it was like, you know, a bit repetitive. Right. Um, especially because you know the show was about Bella and Zendaya being on on Shake It Up. Right. And we were all kind of like their friends and stuff. So, um, so yeah. But uh, other than that, I mean, like Disney, Disney really does their best at, at casting kids who are kind of multifaceted and and have. Uh, you know, different interests and, and they're, they definitely have the ability to kind of, you know, veer off into different, uh, different things like singing, dancing and all that. Right. Right. And that was pretty cool at that time. Cause you also like, I grew up on like, so I'm, I'm, I was born in the early nineties, which was like prime time boy bands, you know, in sync, Backstreet yeah. Boys and yeah. stuff like that. When you're all like, I'm totally going to be a pop star. Cause that's how this works. And you kind of got yeah, to be yeah. a pop star. That's kind of cool. Like you had to do music videos. Um, like, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know, to to a certain degree, for I'll sure. Give it to you. Um, I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll take it. Um, yeah, you know, I I dabbled in like the music for a little bit. I did uh, a couple songs for. I did like one song for the Shake It Up, and then mm-hmm. I did um, another one for Disney, and then I I did like my own solo stuff. Um, so that was honestly fun. That was really fun. And I kind of, I had put it on pause because it had gotten to the point where, um, you know, I, I felt like I wanted to dictate my time to just one of them, you know, the acting or right. the singing, cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to delegate myself, you know, too far, uh, and just kind of spread myself thin. So I, you know, just decided to, to put the music on pause and, and um, stick with the acting, and then you know if the opportunity comes up again, then you know I'll pick I'll pick back up where I left off. 
Yeah, there you go. They, it makes sense because they're <laughs> they're different arenas, but with the music industry. And yeah, they TV definitely and are. Yeah, it's it's a lot, uh, you know, to, to manage both. Uh, and for me, like I, you know, I felt like I could do it. I just I would much rather like you know commit myself fully to one thing as opposed to, um, you know, like I said, spreading myself out too thin and then you know ending up with a short stick. Sure, sure. So when you're doing Shake It Up, is that that's on a stage, I imagine? Yeah. And is there a, there's an audience there as well that you're playing to? Uh, well, so for the first season, yeah, we had we had uh, we had a live audience for the entire first season. Wow. Uh, and that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, so well, especially when you're young, like that's your like first. Uh, introduction really to acting is, you know, it's kind of like you doing theater, yeah, uh, you know, kids sure. theater. And then after the second, after the first season, when we got into the second season, they they stopped doing the live audiences altogether, just oh. because I I think I think the I think the reasoning was that because like the dance numbers had gotten like so extensive that, that um, they were yeah so they were like. They decided that you know most of the stuff we were doing any and would be pre-shot because e- even when we had audiences, we would shoot the day before, and so the audience there were some scenes that the audience you know would see that we had taped the day before, oh. and so it ended up being that like most of the stuff that we were filming was the pre-recorded as opposed to being live, so it just didn't make sense. Sure, sure, okay. Unfortunately. Okay. Sure, I'm I'm fascinated by how that stuff works because I feel I feel like a lot of people don't understand the process of something like a syndicated show. Yeah, I mean, like it, the thing is, is like you know, people ask me how long it, it takes to film and, and things like that, and uh, you know, really, it only takes two days to film, but before that, there's three days of of rehearsal and and run-throughs that we go through um, before we even and a whole bunch of rewrites before we even start filming. Right. Is the process different for like an episode versus like a, a music video that you did for the show? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, like, uh, so for like I said, for the show, for an episode of of like a sitcom, mm-hmm. there, there's you know, you always have like the table read, uh, about two run throughs, and um, and then two days of film. Mm-hmm. And then for, you know, for a music video, it's really like, you know, one day you show up, you kind of know what you're doing. You have like a bunch of different scenes, you know, you, you're singing your song all day and dancing and whatever. And then, that's, you know, you can kind of call it a rap and go home. Wow. I, wow. I would have yeah. thought it'd be the other way around that music videos would be like a much more labor intensive thing. Interesting. I mean, that the, you have uh, with the music video with like the dancing and all that, you have like, a, uh, like a couple days of of dance rehearsals sure but as far as like filming the thing and i feel like what takes longer i would honestly probably say an episode of a, of a sitcom interesting it's kind of cool to say that you've done like because i know you did uh, and i <laughs> have i seen them all adam yes i have i like I the monster <laughs> Mash, super fun rome super fun and then Schoolgirl. i'm wondering did you know how to dance beforehand or is like were you just naturally a dancer or were you, did you like have to um, go I mean, through this and figure it out? Or yeah, I mean, listen, I'm I'm Cuban, so so that I wasn't that, gonna say it. That dancing run run through my blood, but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, honestly, I, I just I I had always liked dancing as a kid, and then uh, when I moved out to LA, that you know, uh, you kind of especially as a young actor. Um, the kind of focus is to, like I like I mentioned earlier, you know, be multifaceted and, and be able to have different talents and and things like that. Sure. Um, so so it was something that like you know I had gone to dance classes before and um, for a while, uh, you know, before even knowing about Shake It Up, but it was just you know something that that happened. And then um, and then yeah, and then I got you know the opportunity to do those music videos and. Um, you know, it paid off. Yeah, I'd say so. And they're fun. That's the other thing. I feel like music videos can be great or not so great. But, like, I feel like especially Disney, I think Disney does a really good job with, like, fun. And, for instance, like, with yeah. your, your schoolgirl video, the Breakfast Club nods 
are amazing. This whole time I was like, oh, oh, I see what you're doing here. This is really fun. Yeah. Well, the 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 the, the schoolgirl wasn't. Uh, it it wasn't a, a Disney music video. That was my really? own solo thing. So yeah. So the Breakfast Club nod was was uh, was all due to uh, to me and the director David Rousseau. Dude, I thought they were tied in because I know the schoolgirl came after the other two. Great, me promo. Yeah. Oh, so you got yeah, to do the two for them, and then you got to do one that you wanted. That's really cool, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, the the yeah the schoolgirl thing was was kind of that was my you know my uh, journey into kind of being a, a solo you know pop star like you said. Sure. Um, so that was so, your yeah. testing the waters of the music industry. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're like, do I want to do this? And then you made a great music video. And yeah. Like, cool. We want all of you. And you're like, hmm, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, though. How how was that then? If you're like developing a music video as opposed to like being hired to do a job. That was that was a blast, honestly. I mean, I had I had recorded the song, and I'm, I, there was a few songs um, that you know we were kind of figuring out which to film the video for and we just kind of ended up deciding because that that the spanish part of that song is is based off of this really old um this really old spanish song oh. so it's kind of like a nod to that so it's a nod to that song um you know a nod like you said to the breakfast club um and uh and yeah and and so to develop that and then kind of like to be involved in in the casting of um, the dancers and uh, kind of like to have really more of a, a driver's seat role in something like that for me was a blast. And to have like a say in how things are done is something that an actor doesn't usually get. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. At least starting out. Yeah. And you're so young too. It's like, were you just born confident or is that something that you've learned to fake? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean, I I've I've always kind of like been under the belief that you know confidence is is definitely something that that's a necessity you know if you yeah. don't believe in yourself no one else is you're right uh, you know so it's it's kind of like I I uh, I've just kind of done my best at, at doing uh, all the work that I need to do so that you know the day showtime comes or or something like that you know I'm ready and I'm always ready there you go. I mean, that makes sense, given that you even went on later to do, like, guest stars on Two Bro Girls. Great show. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Is that something... I, I love talking to people who do guest stars on shows that are established, because I imagine, like, you're going into somebody else's house, right? And then you're doing your part for the day, yeah. and then you leave. Like, was that... How was that experience, and, like, was it kind of different? Because you'd come off a show where you were a series regular for years, and now you're kind of moving on from that yeah um yeah it, it definitely it's like you said you know it definitely feels like going to somebody else's house and you know you don't want to break anything or, or kind of like <laughs> make yourself feel too comfortable um but uh but yeah that that show honestly was so uh was so fun because of how inviting the cast was yeah um it was everybody was so cool and uh, you know they 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 did a really good job of making all the guest stars feel at home. You know I, I've been blessed to kind of work on sets where everybody's honestly super cool. You know I, I've been in this industry for for 12 years and I've heard uh, you know a lot of horror stories on, on about different sets and stuff like that. And I've you know been super blessed that I, I've never had any of those. Sure, that's great. That's what you always want to hear because you don't want something to you know oh, yeah. sour the experience. But then knowing, yeah. knowing you, you'd probably just keep on fighting through. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do my best. There you sure. go. There you go. And then I know from there you went to The Last Ship, another great show. But that's another one that, like, how – you're not on an aircraft carrier, are you? Well, that, uh, that show was super cool because I uh, – so the first – the first three episodes of the show, uh, I believe, I, I wasn't in them, but right. um, they actually filmed 
on like a real maple destroyer. Oh, that's um, so cool. Like the, I think, I think it, it was either the the first three episodes or just like the entire pilot. Sure. Um, was actually shot on on a naval destroyer, and then after that, um, twice a season we would go to San Diego and actually film um, on these destroyers, and so that was really cool because yeah. first of all, you know, it had we had the involvement of the navy, which was. Um, you know, it's super great to have this support when you're doing a show like that. Yeah. Uh, but also, it's just cool because, I mean, one, are you going to ever get to film on a naval destroyer? Yeah, so, for real. You know, I, I uh, yeah, I, my my uncle, my uncle's a, a lieutenant commander in the Navy. Uh, and so for right. me, it was kind of like, oh, wow, this is like, you know, his every day. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is great. He goes, yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so cool, though. That's the, like, I feel like that's the fun thing about, like, where acting specifically as a job can take you is all these random experiences that you wouldn't normally get to have, you get because of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, there's, there's, like, you know, it's just places, like, you never thought you'd go or things you never thought you'd do and, and, and you know, people you'd never thought you'd interact with. Um, it's, it's, it's honestly the best job in the world. Yeah, how can it not be? And then, like, a character yeah. like Ray is such a great character, and you got another recurring, which is awesome. Like, was that was that a lot of pressure as well, being that you didn't come in from the ground floor and was, like, it wasn't a guest star because you're there for a while? Yeah, well, that was, you know, that was another thing where I I was super, uh, super happy to be involved with it. I When I first auditioned for it, it was for a guest starring role. Oh. Um and uh yeah and it was it was meant to be kind of one episode um and you know just the writers thankfully decided it would be just kind of weird to drop off these kids yeah. <laughs> you know in, in the middle of the in the middle of this you know pandemic uh filled world right. um and then so they kind of kept us along for the rest of the season and and then they brought me back uh, you know, for the rest of the show after that. So I was, you know, super thankful for the writers, uh, super grateful for that cast. I love that cast. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that was, that was really cool because it was my first real, uh, adult experience, you know, like, like you said, I, I did two broke girls, so that wasn't, you know, children's programming or anything like that. But this was the first time that I, I went on a set where, um, it was kind of just me. Uh, I, I didn't have, my parents didn't have to come with me because I was, a, you know, an adult, quote unquote. Sure. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I didn't have school. I didn't have to do any of that. So I could just show up to, to set and, and work. Um, so that was, you know, a, a major, um, a major moment for me. That's so cool. Yeah, I never thought about that because there is a time. So, you mentioned school. I've heard of this before, where if you're like a child actor on a set, there's blocked out times where you like have to go to school while at work. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. You have to do a minimum. You have to do a minimum of three hours a day. Uh, but the way it works is, if you do five hours, the the two that you had left over, they count um, as banked hours. So nice. usually, what you'll do. Is Throughout the throughout the days of rehearsal, you do about five hours of school, so that the day that filming comes around, you only have to do one hour of school because you have two hours banked. Ah, they got the system figured out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Is it like? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask dumb questions because I don't understand. Is <laughs> is it like homeschooling where like there's a classroom and there's the other kids of the cast as well, and then a teacher or like what's the what's the process behind this? Yeah, so I mean it, it really depends. I mean like if you're being homeschooled, then you know you're doing your homeschooling program. If you're, um, you know if you're going to like a real high school or a real middle school, and and you, you can just like take your work from. You know, for, I mean, obviously you have to like talk to your teachers and principal and things like that, but you know, you can get your work from them. And so everybody's kind of like doing their own curriculum, but we're just all doing it together with, you know, our set teacher and she's helping us and kind of, um, yeah, she's kind of like our all inclusive teacher, if you will. Ah, 
Oh, there's a set teacher. Interesting. Yeah. See, this is the behind the scenes stuff I'm into. Like, how does this all work? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's really cool though. To to come from Disney Channel and working for all these years and then you get to the last ship and it's like, Oh, this is a huge set. We're on a destroyer. You're like this is your make it or break it next phase of your life job, you know, where you're stepping out into your own. Yeah, definitely. And it's great, and it's a great role too. You know, you get one of those. It, I, I've <laughs> I've noticed with your roles is like they they build on each other. They get more in depth. They get more character depth to them, and it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I actually I really appreciate that. That's uh, that's kind of something that that I've always really wanted. You know, I, I kind of I've always. Uh, and, you know, and I still want, I, I kind of always try to make it so, you know, the next character I play or the next project I'm involved in is, um, you know, it, like you said, grows upon the last one, but is also kind of like, you know, different in a way. Uh, you know, I think Ray is definitely a little different than, um, you know, Isaac and the, where I just played in a way. And both of those are completely different than, you know, when I was a kid and playing Deuce. Right, right. And then even like, you know, you, you were on The Fosters, which is another huge show that yeah. has like a a lot of care into it. And I mean, so different, which just shows more facets of you as a performer to be able to dive in and bring truth to these characters. It's really cool to watch. Oh, that, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, Fosters was, was really fun. And it was, uh, that was, I mean, it was at that point kind of like, most character driven thing that I had done sure. um, you know last ship was was really kind of you know all about the action and all that stuff and, and the characters were a big part but um, but it, it, you know you didn't have this each character didn't you know you didn't dive into their backstory you didn't you know right. you didn't find out about them in that way um, you just kind of saw how they dealt with these situations um, but uh, but when I did the fosters it was kind of like my first real character study on screen um and it was kind of like over the course of i think six or eight episodes something like that um but but uh but yeah so that was a lot of fun uh to go you know from this kind of sweet kid to then um you know yad it up yeah uh, <laughs> you know in jail uh and then you know and then the payoff at the end so yeah it's not bad it's not a not a bad road you're taking, Adam. Not a bad road. <laughs> and, Thank you, man. Thank. You. Do you find that different shows like comparing like the process between like Two Broke Girls, The Last Ship, The Fosters, is it different in the way that you attack the work, or is there like a kind of system where you're like, all right, I think I got this? Yeah. Uh, no, it definitely is different. You know, or at least for me, uh, I I don't you know approach a sitcom like Shake It Up or Two Broke Girls in the same way that I would, um, you know, something like The Fosters or, or Away. Um, you know, it was like, at least for sitcom, you know, finding the, the most important thing for me is, is finding like, you know, the comedy beats and like, um, you know, just di there's different aspects to it. Um, but it's it's really all about you know timing and, and finding um, you know interesting choices like that that for me is like the most important thing in comedy is like unique choices that um, first of all they they stamp you as an actor and you know you kind of like mark you know hey this is this is Adam doing this role if you will you know right uh, that's kind of like what sets you apart from other actors in. Uh, in, in kind of like that world of sitcom. Uh, um, but then, you know, for for Away or for the Fosters, you know, it's more of a real character study. So you kind of try to figure out on your own who this guy was, you know, before he got here, the, you know, the traumatic experiences in his life and, um, you know, how that kind of shaped him or that, you know, the happy experiences in his life and, and like, you know, how those shaped him. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. And that's, you know, another reason why you know, I love this so much is because there are so many different ways. So it's like never really boring. Sure. Sure. And uh, every, every person is different in the same way that every character is different. 
So you get to kind yeah. of open these drawers that you haven't opened before and like, oh, oh. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you try new things and you, you know, and, and you, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it's like a whole new, every character is a whole new experience. Yeah, and you get to, you know, like I said, you get to flare your wings out a little bit. Like, man, in a way, sheesh, you talk about some heavy lifting. Well done, first and foremost. Thank you. What a role. Yeah, it, it, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, I feel like I've been saying that a lot, but, it, but it's, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I just always, <laughs> fun. yeah, I just always have fun doing this. I, I was I've never worked a day in my life. Yeah. Um, so... So, which you know, I'm blessed to say, but uh, away was really cool in in that you know it, it really was um, even on like really on a on a bigger scale, um, just this kind of character study. Yeah. Um, you know, just kind of the people, uh, the people involved. Um, you know, you have Hillary Swank as your lead, and you know, Jason Katniss and Matt Reeves as producers, and, and Josh Charles. So yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of. Not bad. It's a lot of no, not at all. And so it's a lot of like, um, you know, pros and and for me it's like I, I like I said, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I always kind of try to make sure that I'm I'm always ready. Um, and uh, and so I, I put in a lot of work on that one just to make sure that you know day one on set I was ready to go and and um, and we could just you know kind of go and play and and figure it out. Sure. I mean, you definitely don't want to be showing up on a set like that, not knowing your stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. And you made the jump over to Netflix. That's pre- that's. I mean, that's the the fertile ground right now as far as the industry is concerned. It was pretty cool. Oh yeah, no, that was yeah, that was exciting. I mean, you know, when I first started doing this, it, it was the goal was you know network television or you know giant features. Yeah, and now it's really about you know what streaming service you're on. So, you know that's it's true. It's cool. Uh, it's cool for me because you know obviously like I'm a fan of Netflix. Yeah, um, yeah, same. And so, the yeah to be on a on a on a trending number one show there is you know pretty uh, pretty spectacular. I'd say so, and it's such a cool idea too. Anything with space, you're like, yeah, I'm in. And then Hillary Swank, you're like, I'm double in. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> How can you not? Where yeah. did where did that shoot? Well, we shot it in uh, Vancouver. Oh, sweet. How was that? Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. I mean, I fell in love with the city. Uh, I was, you know, there for about uh, four or five months, and wow. um, yeah, it was it was really cool spending time over there. Um, it's just like the best vibe ever i bet i bet i've heard nothing bad about vancouver ever don't think you ever would no <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the it's the canada of canada it's pretty good yeah pretty much pretty much not bad not bad so i i that's great months though so did you find any good places to eat uh oh yeah i found like i found a bunch of really good places i uh i did I was on a, on a steady diet of, of sandwiches. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> whenever, uh, whenever I found the time um, to to get out and go to like a really cool restaurant, I would. Um, so yeah. I mean, sandwiches. There's nothing wrong with that. I love sandwiches. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with sandwiches. No, but there was this uh, there was this one restaurant literally right behind the hotel that I was staying at, and. Uh, I mean, it had the best, uh, the best kimchi fried rice I've ever had in my life. I would go like, really? I would go and just with ten bucks, and I would just what? order a giant of kimchi fried rice. It was pretty much the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Like bacon lard. Oh, what? Dude. Oh yeah, like no, unmatched, unmatched. There you go. That that's how that's how you feel better after doing such the heavy scenes that you do in a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. After a long day of filming, uh, you know, you know, it sounds really good right now. I'm going to cry right. That's right. That's right. Let's see. That's three hours of crying. Uh, two pounds. About two pounds will work. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that mixture. It's like what one cup of water for two cups of rice or something like that. 
Yeah. <laughs> like that. It is how many hours you've spent emotionally broken to how many orders of red rice you get. <laughs> <laughs> And Vancouver, and like, how fun is it to travel for work? That's like the hidden benefit that you don't expect going in. I'm sure. Oh yeah, no, the uh, yeah. I mean, I, listen, I I love I love traveling, you know, to begin with. So Same. to just to be able to go travel around the world, and especially like places like Vancouver. Um, you know, I've been to Atlanta. Um, you know, so it's like I filmed in Napa. So it's like. You know, it's it's really cool because, like you said earlier, you go to kind of places where you never thought you might originally go, uh, and then you just kind of end up there, and and you have all these new experiences that you might have never had. Yeah, how are you at memorizing? I honestly, I I, I pride myself in like that's the one thing that I kind of there you, you know have always unpacked for whatever reason. It's just. Um, it's always been something that I've kind of like naturally been good at, I guess. Nice. Hey, you're in the right job for it then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know what? It's like, it's like, I can remember, I can remember my lines, but I can't remember like people's birthdays. <laughs> uh, so it's like, you know, there's a little give and go there. That's fair. You can't, ha- you can't have it all, Adam. You can't sing, yeah, dance, know, act, and remember birthdays, all right? You got to drop one of these. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I'll give you the pass. You skipped mine this year, but that's cool. I get it. You're busy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my card. In the mail. That's right. That's right. That's okay. I'll find it. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you ever, like, do you ever have time to be, like, reflective on all the cool stuff you've been able to do? Um, sometimes, I mean, I, I kind of, I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> maybe not, maybe not yeah. as much as I, I should, <laughs> uh, but, uh, I don't know. For me, it's kind of like always, I really am always kind of focusing on, on the next step and, you know, at some point I'll, I'll like look back on it all and kind of remember, I do, I do take some time to reminisce every now and then and, and um and kind of see how far i've come uh over like these 12 years mm-hmm. um but, but for the most part i'm i'm always kind of like trying to find out okay kind of like what's the next step from here and you know how do we uh you know how do we proceed sure sure there you go that, i mean that's how you get places <laughs> yeah well that's, i'm trying man uh do you so then uh, when you have those times, is there anything big that you've learned? Twelve years is a long time to be doing the same thing. So, are there any like big lessons along the way that you're like, "Oh, this is this is valuable," be it for your job or just life? Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it's kind of like been never get complacent. I think Ooh, um, you know, especially when you're younger and you have some relative success you know, you kind of have this um, delusion, for lack of a better word, that, uh, that it, it's kind of always going to be like that. Um, yeah. And, um, and you know, it's, uh, it's not the case. Uh, so, sure. you know, you know, to never get complacent was something that I, you know, kind of, I kind of had to learn. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, because, you know, you never want to get too comfortable in anything in life. Uh, you know, and that, that's, Agreed. I think for me, yeah, the, that, that's the thing I think for me that, um, is so great about acting is that most of the things you learn from it, uh, most things that like you learn about are really attributable to life. Um, and, uh, and you know, how to live, you know, life, <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, that, that for me was a huge thing, um, because, you know, we, we as human beings never want to get too comfortable in anything because, you know, that's when you reach stagnation and, and uh, you know, that's death. I agree. Totally agree. It's like when you stop learning, then, like, what's the point? You know, you got to keep yeah. growing and learning. And that's the, that's why people that are, like, 100 years old, they're like, yeah, you know, I'm just down for anything. You're like, oh, being open yeah, to the much. idea. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Is there so? Is there anything? Do you have like an actor's bucket list? Like things that you really want to do? Like, oh, I'd love to ride a horse in a movie or something like that. Do you have any of those? Yeah. Um, I would definitely. I definitely love to be a superhero. Ooh. Uh, what would your powers be? I mean, ideally, I would play Blue Beetle. Uh, Ooh, great one. Yeah. I. In an ideal world. Yeah. Uh, but hey. You know, it's possible. Let's put it out. Let's so, put it out. <laughs> yeah. We'll put it out. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's there's a bunch of things that I would love to do. I would love to be in an A24 film. Of course. Um, I would love to, um, you know, work with um, pretty much anybody. I mean, a Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I just kind of like, there's so many people that I respect that I would love to work with um, on, you know, many different levels. Uh and then I also kind of, you know, at, at some point want to dive into, uh, you know, writing, directing, uh, yeah. producing, kind of like, uh, you know, making my way into, into that part of the industry. Sure. I can see it. I can see it. I also love your answer for that. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Because I imagine I, I, a lot of people, when you hear about it, it's like, oh, I want to do a fight scene. I want to do something like that. But, like, A24, I mean, they make the best movies. Like, by far. They're the, yeah. They swing for the fences every time. And Blue Beetle is a great answer. You can, never, you can never say that their movies are boring. Uh, or, That's true. <laughs> or unnecessary. Yeah. That's um, right. You know, like, Good Time is, I think, one of my oh, favorite movies. So good. Stressful. Um, very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, just, like, Uncut Gems, right? Like, that, yeah. that whole movie, my blood. <laughs> I My still have anxiety too, about too. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a character on screen more, more just like that gave me anxiety. Yeah, it yeah. Was, I was Agreed. stressed the entire time. <laughs> Agreed. And he clearly wasn't helping himself either. No. So that that's kind of what made it worse. I and mean, it's just like you want to scream at him through the movie. Oh my But that's God. what makes it a great movie, right? Yeah, it's true. If you're you emotionally know, pop, 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 impacted. Softy brother. Yeah. My God, that, huh? The, that movie. The other thing is, when it's over, you're like, okay, cool. He won really big, right? But then, it doesn't matter because you know he would have ruined it, and you're like, oh man, I don't get any closure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That that's the that's the thing. Even if what happened didn't happen, yep. there would have been another hour forty five. Yep. Just straight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I agree with you. That movie, it's the most stressful movie I've ever seen, by far. I love that movie. It's I might so rewatch good. it today. <laughs> yeah, I, you should. I just rewatched it a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, I need to leave and make one good decision to make myself feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy good. And dude, Blue Beetle, you've got the comedic timing for it. I can see it. I can see it. Man, you know, I uh, from your mouth. To, to God's ears. We, That's right. Uh, we can make this happen. That's right. I'll put in a call for you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So then as you've been, like you, you've done what few people, statistically speaking, have done in that you're, you're literally living your dream. Like you had a dream as a kid and then you achieved it and then you've kept going. From the other side of that, how does that feel? How do you contextualize that? Or do you not have time because you're constantly going for the next thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I don't take for granted that, that I, that I am living kind of like, you know, the, the dream that I, that I set out to, um, when I was eight years old, you mm-hmm. know, I, I was able to, to accomplish that, you know, I, I wanted my own, you know, Disney Channel show, I got on Shake It Up, and, uh, you know, once that happened, it was kind of like, okay, I'm so happy, um, but, you know, now what's, you know, what's the next step? What's the next goal? Uh, and so, you know, for me now, you know, my aim is to just kind of be able to continue doing um, projects that are, are thought provoking, uh, really cool characters that, that um, kind of like, uh, I think that for me is, is the most important sure. you know, thing for me right now. It's just like, creating creating content that is thought provoking um 
especially in you know in the day and age that we're living in. Totally agreed. I think it's important, and like you know, like flair is fun, but also I think it shows you as an introspective person that you want to dive inward and tell those sort of stories as opposed to the outward ones. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like you know, there, there's there's t- there's a time and place for everything. I think, and yeah. um, you know, I I you know definitely moments in my career where I, I do want to do. Um, you know, maybe things that aren't as thought provoking, and I sure. just, you know, you gotta and, live a little. <laughs> and, and, yeah, you know, and just like just a blast. Um, but you know, still, still a cool story. You know, you never want to do a bunk story. Yeah, for real. And if you do, don't tell anyone about it. Deny its existence. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Is it is it different than you expected? Then having like been able to get on the road and keep it going. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, yeah, because I guess, I guess when, when you kind of look at it from the outside, you see, you know, all these, like, major celebrities, and so when somebody has kind of, like, success in acting, everybody just really assumes it's all the same, um, and that's, you know, not necessarily true, um, (laughs) you know, there's, uh, there's a bunch of actors in the industry that, um, you know, that they make their living off of acting, but there's also a bunch of actors in the industry that, um, you know, that don't, that they have to, you know, get other jobs to survive. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, I think people don't, I think people don't understand that, uh, you know, unless you are Leonardo DiCaprio or yeah. Matt Damon, <laughs> or, um, yep. you know, Scarlett Johansson or, or people of that, you know, caliber, um, it's really a grind. And even for them, even for them, they still grind, and, you know, just obviously on a completely different level. But it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of hard work. And so I think that's the one thing where I was, um, you know, really kind of surprised um, when I kind of really joined this whole thing mm-hmm. was kind of how competitive it could be, but also like, how many people within the community want to see you uh, grow and do better. Oh, interesting. It like almost has a more supportive side to it than most people would expect. Yeah, I mean, not much more. Cause right, yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <true>. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, interesting. but yeah, no, there, there definitely is... You know, and I've been lucky to, to surround myself with um, people who I consider to be very, very talented actors, mm-hmm. and um, who are, you know, the most the most supportive. And I, I support them just like they they do me, and um, and I'll you know I'll continue to do so, and, and I know they will too. That's so important to have a community, especially with this industry, because nobody does it alone. You know, it's like there's it's such yeah. a team effort, and there's so many things you have to do to get ahead. <laughs> And I, I, one of my favorite quotes I've ever heard was like, a dream job is still a job. And you're like, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean I, it just doesn't happen. Right. Um, I don't know. just walk from the audition to the red carpet. And you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have like, to do it. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Exactly. Like, you know, everybody wants to be an actor, but nobody wants to work 16 hour days in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it's the give and take. So then, do you have do you have any advice for anyone who is trying to get into the industry now, and for someone who's been in it for so long? Um, yeah, I think I think for me, you know, the the advice that I would give is is uh, kind of writing off the complacency thing I mentioned earlier is mm-hmm. is to really commit yourself to doing the work. You know, it, it is it is a grind. It is um, you know, a lot more work than people might think. Um, but you know, the work pays off. And when you commit yourself to each character and really doing the best job that you can, uh, you know, it, it's at some point, you know, it's, it's always going to pay off. I agree. I agree. I think it was the rock that in his infinite wisdom, that's it. Hard work will always pay off. Not always in the way you expect it, but you will always get an equal return on investment. And I was like, thanks, The Rock. 
I'm going to remember yeah, this. Well, listen, if anybody knows what's up, yeah. it's doing the rock job. <laughs> For real, the biggest movie star on the planet. He might have learned a thing or two. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe. Well, dude, this was great. I think it was a great little little dismount area. This was really fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. That was. I know. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on. Now, I have one one last, well, two last questions. The first one, Irigoyen? Yeah. I did it right? Oh, yep. yes, dude. I've been practicing yeah. for a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And yeah, then, honestly, people people have been getting it uh, kind of like more and more right. Good. Um, you know, before before people would add letters and right? take away letters. <laughs> Is is the R supposed to be rolled or not? Yeah, yeah, oh, but man. you know, okay. I don't, I, I, don't make it harder than than it already is for people. That's but, very um, hard. <laughs> but the correct pronunciation is Irigoyen. Irigoyen. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Boom! You can expect that in the intro. <laughs> All right, dude. This was so fun. Uh, before I let you go, where can people find you online to reiterate my sentiments that you're great? Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter and on Instagram, and it's just my name, at Adam Irigoyen. No, no, you got to roll the R. Oh, yes, yes, it's at Adam Irigoyen. There we go, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and... Thank you, thank Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.